Hi there. I'm Christine, and I'm the Litigation Director with the Canadian Constitution Foundation. And today I wanted to give you a special update about a new case that we've just filed in the Ontario Superior Court. It's a constitutional challenge of the federal government's policy requiring incoming travelers to quarantine at their own cost at government contracted hotels. The cost is upwards of $2,000 per traveler, and in most cases, the cost is non-refundable, even if your results from your PCR test arrive within you know, even a matter of hours. We're bringing this legal challenge as a public interest organization, but also along with five individual applicants who have either recently traveled or are seeking to travel in the immediate future for compassionate reasons. And I wanted to tell you today about the reason we're challenging this law and about some of the people that we're working with to challenge the law. Quarantine hotel policy, in our view, is exploitive and punitive at a cost of over $2,000 per traveler. The policy is redundant because travelers who enter Canada are already required to take a PCR test before they board a plane. They're required to take a PCR test for a second time when they land, and they're also required to quarantine for 14 days at their own home requiring them to stay at a government contracted hotel at an exorbitant and exploitive cost of $2,000 per traveler is unnecessary and redundant. And in fact, it actually exposes many travelers to even greater risk than they would be exposed to had they just returned to their own home. For example, um, many travelers have complained to me that they've been corralled into large banquet halls with other travelers while they wait for their rooms to be ready. Um, they've needed to interact with many individuals at the airport, uh, in transit from the airport to the hotel, and many members of hotel staff. They've complained about um, crowded lobbies and being corralled into these large rooms. And we've also heard complaints that some travelers have not been fed for extended periods of time. Uh, one individual was not fed for up to 23 hours. Uh, other individuals have complained of food that is cold and inedible and doesn't meet their dietary needs. And we also, of course, have heard reports of a sexual assault taking place at one of these facilities. If the government is going to detain people, they need to ensure that those people are safe. And right now it appears that these, these quarantine hotels are not operating safely or humanely. Um, they're really hurting a lot of people. Uh, including people who need to travel for compassionate reasons. The government has cruelly refused to create a meaningful exemption from the quarantine hotel requirement for people who must leave Canada for compassionate reasons. And the five people who are fighting alongside us to challenge the law are all traveling for compassionate reasons. Uh, the quarantine hotel requirement is hurting these people. Let me tell you about a couple of them. First, we're working with a man named TJ. He lives in Vancouver and his wife lives in the United States. Last year, TJ's wife injured her shoulder and she now needs regular physiotherapy. And it's a struggle for her to even complete daily tasks like showering and washing her hair. You know, TJ was traveling to the United States to help his wife who lives alone. She doesn't have family in the state. And um, she now needs surgery on her shoulder, but TJ has had to come back to Canada because as the sole income earner in his family right now, uh, he needs to, to work in Canada and he simply can't afford the cost of a $2,000 quarantine hotel when they're on uh, you know, a tight budget the way they are. Now TJ wants to go down in the United States to help his wife when she has surgery in the coming weeks but they simply can't afford the quarantine hotel stay. And the lack of a meaningful exemption for travelers like TJ, who is traveling for unimpeachable reasons, is, is cruel and bizarre, because frankly, there is a compassionate exemption that the government has contemplated for the reverse situation. If the reverse were the case, and TJ was the one who was injured, and his wife needed to come into the United States to help him while he has surgery, the government has created a compassionate exemption for that situation. It's bizarre that they've contemplated an exemption for only one direction of travel when both scenarios are equally likely. And this, this lack of an exemption is hurting other travelers, like our applicant, whose name is Jan, and he lives in Quebec. Now, Jan 
is the uh, legal guardian of his mother who is quite ill. Um, she suffers from dementia and she lives in a care facility in France. Jan has been told that his, his mother uh, will likely not survive the year and he has um, a, a strong desire to go to France to be with his mother at the end of her life. She has been in and out of hospitals this year and he would like to say goodbye to her and to be with her at the end of her life. But the cost of this quarantine hotel at $2,000 is, is punitive. It makes it almost impossible for travelers like Jan to see their family members at the end of their life, which is, is cruel and unnecessary because we know that the government has contemplated the reverse exemption. You know, there are a lot of people who are being hurt by by the, these, this policy, and that's why we're challenging it. We're challenging it on the grounds that under Section 6 of the Charter, you have the right, the fundamental right, to enter, remain in, and leave Canada. And a $2,000, you know, cost added to that is a violation of that right. And in our view, it's an unjustified violation because the government has contemplated compassionate exemptions in some circumstances, but not in others. Um, you know, I was devastated when I read these stories and when I was told these stories, I've spoken to all of these applicants that we're working with, and that's why we're fighting back against the government. And I'm, I made this video today because I wanted to ask if, if you can help, you can share this video, um, let people know how damaging this policy is. You can also donate to help fight this um, battle in court. We are representing all the applicants pro bono, but we are paying our lawyer in order to do this important work. You know, he's he's offered us an inc incredibly generous rate, but this, this work cannot be done for free. So please consider making a donation to help with this fight. Uh, you can also sign our petition, which is available on our website, the ccf.ca. Um, and share the petition on your Facebook and social media. Uh, thanks very much, and uh, we, I'll, I will keep you updated about any new developments in the case. We should have a court date very shortly because we are seeking an emergency injunction, and those are usually held heard on a very uh, expedited timeline. So um, if you sign up for our mailing list at the ccf.ca, you will get regular updates, and you can also subscribe to our YouTube and get regular video updates that way as well. Um, my name again is Christine and thanks so much for tuning in and hearing about this new and important case.